Hey I'm Max and welcome to this Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. By the end of this tutorial right here you should have a simple game like this where you can jump on cubes, you can reach the checkpoint to have a cool particle effect, you have a cube that moves around and you can jump on it and move with it, you have over here a fake cube that you can just walk right through it, and a cube that goes invisible and visible every couple of seconds. You can also die if you hit the spikes, and when you hit retry, you go back to your last checkpoint. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so we already have a lot of features in our game for a beginner tutorial, but you can see that the spikes over here, even if I run into them, it doesn't do anything. And the basic idea of a game is that you need to be able to lose. So let's make it so those spikes damage us, and if we do run out of lives, we die. Okay, so first I'll go in my content drawer, then go in the third person BP, blueprint, and open up the third person character. Now you can see over here already a bunch of events with a bunch of functions to turn the camera, jump, move around, but those are all from the template and you can look at them if you want to learn a little bit how it works. So for example over here jump, press, jump, release, stop jumping. And in case you're wondering how to set up the keybinds for those events, you just have to go in edit, project settings, then you go down to input over here in the engine. And you can see all of the action mappings and access mappings. So you can see, for example, jump, if I open it up, you can see it's set to spacebar or the gamepad face button or all of those other buttons. So when you press them, it's going to jump and release them, it's going to stop jumping. So for now, we don't need to touch those. We can just go under them, right click and add a custom event. We will call this event damage. And we need to use this event to damage our player. But first, we need to create some help for the player. So I'm going to go to variable at the bottom left, click plus, call it health, then change it to a integer. And I'm also going to set it to instance editable, just so I can see it in the editor and show you the value going down. Next on damage, I'm going to set the health by dragging it and clicking on set. Then I will drag health, click on get, drag, just put a little minus here to get the subtract. Then I'm going to select the subtract, remove one, and then drag the result into the health over here. Make sure to drag your execute pin to the set, otherwise it's not going to run. So you can see on damage, I'm going to, with this execute pin, set the health to the result of this, which is health minus one. So if the health is three, it's going to take three, minus 1, so it's going to be 2 over here, so 3 minus 1 is going to be 2, so we are going to set the health to 2. Also we need to make sure that the health default value is not 0, because by default a value is going to be set at 0, so we need to compile to be able to change the default value, so once I hit compile and I go on my health over here, I can see the default value is 0, I'll put like 2, so we can start with 2 health, and then compile again to set the default value. But now there is nothing calling this damage event. I need to tell the spikes when the player hits you, damage him for one damage. So for this, I just go in my content drawer, go in my blueprints, open up my spikes blueprint. And now you can see a bunch of events over here, begin play, actor, begin overlap, and event tick. We actually don't need those, you can delete them or keep them to mess around later if you want. And if you ever delete them and you need them back, you can just right click and search for example begin play and you can get it back. What we need is to go on the static mesh and then scroll down, make sure it is set to block all and then we can go down again and at the bottom we can see events and we can see the first one is on component it so it's going to be called when it's hit by something solid. So I'm going to click on the plus and it's going to make it appear right here and now we can have multiple parameters like the hit component which is obviously going to be the static mesh the other actor which is the actor that hit the spikes so in our case it's going to be the player the other component will be the skeletal mesh of the player and then the force of the impact and we have some other settings right here that we can get for example by doing break and then we can see a bunch of other things but we won't need those yet so in our case we want to get the other actor that hit the spikes and damage him but if we try to drag from it and put damage you can see that our function is not here and why is that? Well, you can see at the top it says actions taking a actor object reference because this right here, you can see when I hover over it, it says 
actor object reference. But our damage custom event is in the third person character. So what we need to do is tell Unreal Engine check if this actor is a third person character and if so then call the damage event on it. So we need to drag, do cast to third person character like this and it's going to drag the execute automatically. So now if cast fail that means what hit the spikes was not a player, in our case we just want to not do anything. So for example if you have enemies in your game and they hit the spikes and you don't want them to be damaged, just do cast third person character and if an enemy hits it, it's not going to do anything. And then we can drag off the third person character, so now you can see when I hover over it, it says third person character object reference, so that's what we want. And then when I drag from it, I can go damage and you can see call function damage. So this is the function that we made right here. So when we hit the static mesh, it's going to check if what hit it was a player, and if so, it's going to call damage on it. So this is going to be called, and it's going to reduce the health by 1. So let's make sure everything is compiled, save everything, and let's test it out. If I run the game, and I go on my third person character right here, I can see my health value because I set it to instance editable. And now if I run into the spice, you can see Oh, it's going down way too fast. It's going down to minus 300. And that's because every tick when we try to move forward into it, it reduces it by one. So we need to add a delay to it to make sure we are immune for a few seconds after getting hit. Like in Mario, if you hit a spikes, then you get immune for like two seconds. How do we do this? Well, it's pretty simple. We need to add another variable. So click the plus again. I'll call it immune. Then you set it to a bool, and in damage right here, before removing the health, we just have to add a branch, so you can drag from the execute pin, even if it's already linked to something, and then when you add something, it's going to put it in the middle. So what we need here is a branch, which is pretty much a flow control, so it's like a if, if you're ever done programming, it's if something is true or false, it does something different. So you can see when I add the branch, it goes to the branch, and then the true goes to the health. So here we can drag the immune, which is a boolean, which means a true or false. And I can get immune and put it over here. So what this does is get the immune value, check if it's true or false, and if it's true, remove the health. But if you notice something is wrong here, we don't want to remove the health when the immune value is true, but when it is false. Because when it's true, we are immune, so we should not remove health. So here you have two options, either you can drag from immune and do a NOT, which is going to invert it, like this. Or what I prefer to do is, more intuitive in my opinion, is to right click on the true, then click break all pin links, which is going to break this link right here, and instead link the false to the set health. So now if immune is false, we remove one health, and if it's true, we don't do anything. After we remove a health, we need to set the immune, of course, to true, so we need to check the checkbox over here. So now, after we remove the health one time, immune will be true, so it will no longer remove anything. But now you can see if I compile and run this, and check my character value, you can see health is 2, and now if I run, it goes to 1. But you, see, you can see that immune stays true forever. So we actually need to add a delay, so you can drag off of this, type delay, and you can add a delay of let's say 2 seconds, this is however long you want the immune to stay. And then you can set immune again, but now to false, so you don't check this. And now if I run, I check my player character, you can see health is 2, immune is false. Then when I run into it, health is 1, immune is true. Then immune after 2 seconds goes back to false, and I can remove the health again. Also, I wanted to show you if you want to add a parameter to your function or custom event, you can do this by clicking on the damage custom event. Then you can add an input over here with the plus, and you get an input for example the damage amount. So if we do amount, and then instead of removing one, we can remove the amount like this. So you can drag from the event. And what this does is now when we go in the spikes and we do damage, you can see amount appears under it. So we can put for example 1 damage every time we run into it. So you can see my health is 2, I run into it, it's 1. 
but I can also do for example another spike that is more dangerous and does 10 damage. And now if I run into the spikes, I go straight down to minus 8 and then minus 18. So just a little fun fact for you, so now you know how to add parameters to your custom events. So now the only thing left to do is to make it so when the player goes to 0 health, he dies pretty much. So you can see now I went to 0, minus 1 and nothing happens. So in my third person character, I will go over here to the functions and add a new function. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between a custom event and a function. A custom event is not going to have any output and it's not going to let you create any local variables. But it's going to let you use delays which function do not. So this is the reason why here we use a custom event because we needed a delay. But for the function we're about to do we don't need any delays. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it ragdoll and it's going to create a ragdoll for the player. So you can see since this is a function I have my input just like the custom event but I also have a output which means I can return a value. And I also have options here to add local variables which are like variables but just for this function. To make our character ragdoll we simply need to drag the mesh component. You can drag it directly from the component to the event graph like this or you can search for mesh and then you can click get mesh now to create a ragdoll in Unreal Engine you need to drag from the mesh and set simulate physics to true so you check the simulate but you can see if I go on my mesh and I scroll down to the collision you can see the collision preset is character mesh and if I open it up you can kind of see maybe I can go on custom to show you better query only no physics collision so what this means is that the character mesh is only used for tracing collisions like hits uh, with a gun or whatever but it's not actually used to collide with the world, that is the capsule collider. The little capsule here is the only thing that collides with the world. So if we just do same with physics like this, the character is going to fall through the map. So we also need to drag from this and set collision profile name. And the profile name we want in this case is simply ragdoll, which is going to set our mesh. We can try it out right here, ragdoll. It's going to set it to block everything except the pawn and collision enabled which is the most important part. We also need to disable the player input after the player is dead because we don't want the player to keep moving around after being turned into a ragdoll. So we can right click, go disable input and you can see over here it takes a player controller object reference. So you can simply drag from that and go player controller and the first one is get player controller. That's what you want. Make sure to link this up and now our function should work. To test it out we can go in our event graph and after taking a damage so after reducing our health we can check if the health is lower or equal to zero and if so create the ragdoll. So over here I'm going to break the pin links between the set health and the set immune. I'm going to drag this down. After the set health I'm going to create a branch and I'm going to do the immune stuff if the player is not dead. And if he is dead, I'm going to call the ragdoll function. So this is going to call hit over here and execute all of this code. So we could have just put this code right here, just in this event graph right here. But it is way cleaner to create functions. And when you get big projects, if you put everything into the event graph, it's going to be so messy. So please create functions for things that you need. But now you can see the condition here is always true. So how do we know if the player is dead and should ragdoll or if it's not and it should have the immune and then unimmune two seconds later? Well here we have the health variable so we can either drag from here to get the value or if it's less confusing for you, you can drag back the health, get health and then how do we know if the player is down? You do less than or equal to zero and you can simply link that up like so. So now if the health is less than or equal to zero, we will ragdoll, otherwise we will do the immune. So let's test it out. Now if I hit play, I check my player, you can see health 2 immune false, now health 1 immune true, immune false, and now health 0 and my player just went out of the screen. So let's try this out again. So now if I touch it again, oh my god. So these type of bugs are going to be very common when you develop games where things happen and you have no idea why. 
and sometimes it can be very difficult to find a reason and it's something very silly most of the time. In this case, the reason why it does this is because when we set our collision to ragdoll, you can see it blocks pretty much everything except pawn, that is ignore. And if we look at our hair that is above the head, if we go into the collisions, you can see it's block all dynamic and it's a world dynamic. So the player mesh is going to collide with its hair. Yeah, it's kind of stupid, but that's how it is. So we can just set the collision to no collision on the hair. And now if we compile and save and I run into those spikes, you can see now I just fall down. Thanks for watching this part of the tutorial. Make sure to tune in into the next one to see more about the UI and a little bit more advanced features. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far and you'll learn a few things.